Hello everybody. This last Sunday was Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day. Been doing that for about the last five years. Uh, my partner, she wanted to do an old school paint can like she'd done uh, back in grade school. So we built one. Um, I ended up cleaning out an old paint can because our local uh, hardware store didn't have any. And the local big box store had some, didn't have any tops, and I was running out of time. Uh, it's kind of frustrating, a lot of work, so I don't recommend it. Although getting the big rubbery blob out of the bottom because the paint was completely dried, that was pretty satisfying. I got the basic parameters from it from MrPinhole.com. Put a couple of links uh, down in the description below. Based on the pin, uh, on the paint can. The focal length uh, from one side to the other is six and a half inches, about 165 millimeters. Uh, the film size, we used uh, black and white print paper. Uh, this is seven inches inside, so I cut down some eight by 10 paper. I used some RC3 uh, Arista paper for film. Uh, the pinhole size on this guy is 0.54 millimeters and I was managed to get a pretty precise one. I'll put a link for that below. It's a site called withoutlenses.com. It's got some really cool ideas. So it came out to F305. So some pretty long exposures with this guy. Started with some aluminum from a soda can used uh, my calipers, I don't have a proper micrometer, marked the depth of the needle where it was uh, the right width, dimpled the aluminum, and people recommend finer and finer sandpaper. I didn't have any really fine grit sandpaper, so I used some pretty fine steel wool. It worked out really, really nice. Marked the uh, pinhole with a black marker, then I ended up recleaning it after I checked it against the light with a loop. And then used a piece of console tape for the shutter. I did put a little film holder inside here. You probably can't see it. I have a still that shows a piece of paper in there. Um, then we figured out the exposure, uh, treating the wrist paper as ISO 6. Apparently setting it that low, you don't really have to monkey with reciprocity. And my sweetie got this picture of the plastic flamingo in the yard, about a two minute exposure. And then later I shot these old dried out roses. And then that evening when we went to dinner, I got the uh, Poe Museum in Pewaukee, New Mexico. So after the paint can, I built one based on, this is the Lomo Bel Air Instax Wide Back. It's made for a Lomo 120 camera, lets you shoot the Instax Wide. Um, I did the same kind of calculations for the pinhole and then built uh, you know, a lens barrel out of some corrugated plastic, the kind garage sale signs, things like that are on. The front is just some uh, black craft paper. Uh, I started putting it together with more of that console tape, but it was kind of wobbly. So I ended up using some hot glue down the seams. And like the can, I painted everything with flat black. Um, I based the measurements for this on the diameter of the Instax wide image, not the full frame, including the, the border. Came out to 117 millimeters and F256. Um, by the time I finished this one, it was dark. So what I did was just ran around the house because you have to shoot on pinhole day for pinhole day. And I just opened it up. I've done open flash uh, on some old cameras too. Set it somewhere, pointed at something, and then, you know, just point the flash at it. I tried to do some kind of side lighting and then you just pop it and then cover it back up, run the film through the rollers and there you go. So it's kind of a bizarre hodgepodge today, but I had a lot, a lot of fun for World, Worldwide Pinhole Day. 
It's always the last Sunday in April. I recommend you make something next year. Get out there and relive some childhood stuff. So I'll see you then.